three. Take three. Hello, everyone. Well, Elena, today's selection is Caro Mio Ben. And oh, it's not Caro Mio Ben. What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> Caro Mio Ben on the brain. Take four. <laughs> Take four. I keep it. I'm, I'm so distract. I'm so distracted today. Okay. <laughs> Take four. Hello, everyone. Well, Elena, today's selection is Caro Mio Ben. Oh. <laughs> Well, Elena, today's selection is O del mio dolce ardor, and we are going to explore the differences. It's fine. Here we go. Really? Take six. Hello, everyone. Well, Elena, today's selection is O del mio dolce ardor, and we are going to explore the differences between singing and speaking and many other details. So let's begin by speaking through the text. Hello, singers. I start. O oh, del mio dolce ardor, bramato oggetto, Laura che tu respiri, al fin respiro. Ovunque il guardo io giro, le tue vaghe sembianze, amore, in me dipinge. Il mio pensier si finge, le più liete speranze. E nel desio che così m'empie il petto, cerco te, chiamo te, spero e sospiro. All right. So I, uh, I would like to underline something that has to do with the meaning of that O, single O, considering the uh, spoken Italian nowadays. So closed O is a surprise O. Oh, but if you um, if you say oh, open oh, it really sounds like a, oh, that's good, at last. So it has a different meaning. I wouldn't use an open oh here. Some people will vocally say that vocally they have to open it, right? Um, but you, the thing is, right, with what you're saying is that they need to uh, transmit to the audience what sounds like a closed O, no matter what you do vocally. Here's another thing, right? In the wrong hands, people could do the right vowel and still do it wrong, right? So people could do this really clunky over-interpretation of that first interjection, right? Where I've heard people go, oh, tell me. And then like, so the O is part of something else. Instead of, you know, it just goes forward. Oh, tell me, oh, dolce ardo, right? To like that, to, 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 the, to the right phrasing or something musical. Actually, if we read the, the sentence, but if we also listen to it, it's much better than oh, because it is in the sentence there are many closed o's, and it sounds very good. Oh, del mio dolce ardo. And it's like, so. You like the harmonization. Yeah, exactly. The harmonization you... of it. Exactly. If you say, oh, del mio dolce ardor, it sounds, why that oh? <laughs> yeah. Why? It is, it's, it's ugly. Not... Also, it's ugly. It's very it's... ugly. And we wanted to say about the L's also, del l mio dolce, dolce. The, the, the first one is in front, the other one, dol, is much in the back. So, so the L precedes the ch. So... Dolce. So Dolce. it comes right up to where the ch is going to be formed. Yeah. So for me, L is dependent upon what's coming up next. Sure. Right? The same with M and N. It's what's coming up next. Also, these L's become nasal because they're touching a consonant. I, say say V-O-L-L. -L. V -O -L -L. Okay, volo. I fly. Volo. See, volo. No, notice the L. Volo. Volo. Yeah. But volo. not... Vallo, right? See, dolce, dolce. See what I mean? 
And th this is the mistake that's made so often with non-native speakers. Okay, they let me will, try. They will double the, that L that's between the vowels. Let me try. Single L. Volo, dolce. Well, yes, the the sound, the, the L before the C sounds double, while the other one doesn't. Okay, it's like all'alba vincerò, all'alba. That sounds yes. But both, yeah. L's, both L's double in that case because the L of alba touches the B. And it becomes even more pronounced because the singing slower. So yeah. the, L has to, the L has to be exaggerated, right? And this is one of the things we're talking about, difference between speech and singing, right? So if I were speaking it, you would say, well, what's he going on about? He's going so far into that. But it's because I'm thinking about the, the space in the, in the singing, right? So let's talk about R's. These are so final R is going to roll if it yeah. doesn't touch anything. Final R is going to flip if the next word starts with a vowel. So R's that are intervocalic between vowels are flipped. Like the word for dear or expensive in Italian, right? Caro. 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 Right. So often we hear carro, it means something else, right? But in this case, ardor. Right. Both of these roll. The first R rolls because it touches a D. The second R rolls because it is final and the sentence stops in this case. Yes. So most often a native Italian will roll those R's. Yes. So, like, so let's go on to the second line. OK. Bramato getto. So this is a very good one to demonstrate for you the difference between double T in single T. Oggetto. Uh, we have uh, the double T here. We have to just make a pause, a silence, which I call a suspense silence. <laughs> and uh, if you think, you have to be very precise with the rhythm and you have to keep the tongue on the palate. Oggetto. This is how you pronounce the double T while you speak, while you speak, not when you sing. But I think if, the way you just did it was beautiful for singing because you go up to the C. So we don't say two T's, right? You go just, to the T and then you don't say it. So okay. to demonstrate again for them. May I do another example just to make it yes, more clear? Absolutely. Uh, the difference between the word notte and the word note. The word notte is night. The word not note is the notes, the notes, the music. So if you have to say notte, you keep this silence, tongue up, notte. If you have to say note, you do notte. Yes. So if, yes, you, have yes, to yes. Sing, if you have to sing it, you of, of course you're you sing on the vowel, so the o is long. And you have to say no. And here you have the difference when you sing between the word notte and the, the word note. Because if you pronounce properly the T, you will say notte. And this is double. If you pronounce properly the, the T, but not double, the single T of note, you will say notte, which is very a slight T very soft, while the other one has the palate on, but just a second before pronouncing it, because you have a long O, oh, of course, you are singing on a vowel, you have to do it. So it, it's very difficult when you have a long, long melody on the, the, these words, because you have to, to take care of the vowel that precedes. Let's do it with oggetto. If you just pronounce oggetto with one T, you don't change the meaning of the word, but it's wrong. And it doesn't yeah, sound it's not good. beautiful. As, exactly. So let's try it. Let's try it so you have you can hear it. O oggetto. We can uh, pronounce the e longer and the t e double t. Okay. Oggetto. Stop phonation for a while. Put the tongue on the palate and double t strong. Oggetto. But be careful because the consonant has to be anticipating a little bit the beat because you cannot put the consonant on the beat, otherwise you will make the, the, the musician get crazy. 
<laughs> we have to sing the vowels on the beat always. <laughs> This is very important, but we have to stop the phonation for a while and put a very strong T. That's the double T. Again, oggetto, oggetto. It's a very fast pause. I'm just doing it a little too long, but it, it is a very quick stop of the phonation. Well, if it is wrong, it is oggetto. Yes, wrong. It's, you can it, hear it's missing, it. it's missing the spiciness of having yeah. the two. Oggetto, oggetto. It's one of, the most the beautiful, one of the most beautiful things about the Italian language is like that. It's very, it's very legato and very beautiful with the vowels, but then the, you have like a little bit of percussion with the, the, the doubles. So it, it gives it this beautiful balance. And that's why it's so beautiful to listen to when, you, when you're singing, right? Um, now the double G. Oh, there's one more point I want to make, right? You're talking about the rhythm of singers. There is so much in, in, the, in the, the Schirmer piano arrangement of this. There's so much that's off the ink that the pianist has to play. And many of the problems in performance I've seen with this has not been with the singers, but with the pianists. Because the pianists, they just play exactly what's written. And they don't pedal anything differently. And they don't use their ears so much. So you, you have to hang around with the right pianist to, to help, you know, to really collaborate on, on this aria and make sure they have somebody who's really sensitive to the language and the, the push and pull of the time, of course, without going over the top. I won't get into it because I didn't want to say <laughs> wrong things. And <laughs> it's not I'm gonna, my... hate, I'm gonna get hate mail from pianists, but that's okay. Bring it on. No, send, the send it to Elena. Sorry? I see they can send the hate mail to you. <laughs> I won't speak about that. No, the, the problem is that I am a bass player. So when I sing, I have to keep my, my ear sticking to the drum. And I have to be very precise. So it's very hard when you, when you play and sing, uh, when you play an instrument like bass and, and, and you sing, to be free with your voice and very precise with the with the rhythm. So, but I have a drummer that is always pointing at me well, and saying. You, you, <laughs> you bring up another point, right? For singers, right? That all your music comes from the bass line. So, the thing that when you get with an orchestra for the first time, it's very disconcerting because you're you're singing on stage and the sound is all delayed. But one thing that you can rely on hearing is the bass line. So when you're singing and people are in your octave, you don't hear them if you're together with them. You know you're together. Not only that, all the music is shaped by the bass, especially in music like Mozart, Beethoven, Schubert, right? When you're singing these things. And this especially, the, 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 there's a made-up accompaniment that was not really that true in the Schirmer edition, but it's very good for singing because they give you a bass line. So that's how you keep your place in this, in this, uh, in this aria. So um, that, that's also how you shape the music. You just keep your ear on that bass, right? Yeah. So the timing and the push and pull are done with the coordination. Uh, the, the pianist, actually, the left hand of the pianist is how you can kind of help the singer and guide the singer along, you know? So you're not exactly following. You're leading and following at the same time. And this is a beautiful dance that you do. And that, that's my point with the accompaniment. All right, so um, we, we, we're, we're still on the second line, and uh, yes, object, I, I, I like the double G, the that. double G is different than the double T in the uh, how long it is and how it phonates. So let's let's talk about that. Object. I, I think that uh, comparing the wrong form and the right form can help more than speaking a lot because yes. you can hear it easily. Oggetto is like a, is just a j, a j, like like just. Okay, the my, sound. My is point though is my point is to somebody executes it the way they execute double T, you get this, you get oggetto. Now it's ugly mm -hmm. because that person did and stopped <laughs> see so 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 the the double g is like double b where the phonation doesn't stop so much you just get you kind of drag on it i don't know yeah, how else yeah. to explain it right so if you say just to say the word again 
And I, I asked the listener to hear the difference between the dragging of the double G, but the continuance of it, and then the stopping and going up to the double T. Okay, I'll do it like this, and then I will do it also wrong anyway. Yes. So yes. that they have the idea of how it sounds. Okay, so it is um, oggetto. If you listen, you will hear oggetto. There is a sound in the mouth. It starts, od, and it is very on the soft palate. It is incredibly back. Oggetto. This is the double of the G. Oggetto. It doesn't sound that bad. It's not oggetto. It's not all no, out like right, this. Right. But there's this like a wave crashing. Oggetto. Yeah. A wave inside. Oggetto. There's a giro, right? What they what you call it. It's, it's a turn, right? Is it so it, right? So it's part of um, you say in English sing song, right? Now sing song when you exaggerate it becomes bad, and the audience actually will get seasick. But uh, there is a there is a there is a turn in it. Okay, yeah. so I did the wrong one because uh, somebody says that, um, and I come from a, a region that tends to make the double become one. <laughs> so this is something I can do easily. Oggetto, oggetto. That's wrong, wrong. This is something I would say probably. Not saying, no, no, not saying the, the wave, you know. The right one, oggetto. And it is very good. It sounds good to hear. Better. So now, now our our le our next line, our third line. Okay, let's go on. Laura che tu respiri, al fin respiro. Okay, so Laura, when you sing, right, you had lots of ah. Uh, you we we cannot um, diminish that there's an ah uh and an u, uh, and you have to hit all of them, right? And again, it's another turn, right? And then this R is flipped. Between two yeah, Laura. Uh, for example, when I have started learning uh, diction because I wanted to sing better, um, I started um, improving my R's. When you speak, you speak so fast that you say, Laura, que tu respiri. You don't even hear that there are R's in this sentence. What? You're saying that just being a native Italian, you still have to work hard. Uh, <laughs> lyric, lyric, lyric diction, right? So yes. This is the realization that lots of people need to have, right? That, right, Italians work very hard at singing Italian. Yeah, absolutely. I have to say, Laura, che tu respiri. If I don't do that when I sing, they they wouldn't understand what I'm singing. That that's what happens. In right now, when you read it. I don't know if you were aware of it because you just do it naturally, but you, when you read it, you used, I noticed I did two, I, um, in my video, I do two, I, I spell this out two different ways, right? Um, you did it actually both ways. First time when you read it, you said K2, right? And I'm exaggerating the double T, but you did a slight double T. This last time you read it, you rolled the R after two. The reason is both of those monosyllables are strong intend to cause so there is a case for singing it either way and it takes a very good musician to pull off i think the second one the first one is easier right so if you're singing um la laura che tu respiri versus see i doubled the t that time laura che tu respiri the second time i rolled the r after two, I didn't, but see, if you do this, Laura, que tu re, it's too much. Yeah, see, yeah, now I, I doubled I, both. So I, I, it takes the sensibility of being very, of being musical to pull, I don't know if I was successful I, or not I, when I did that, but, uh, you, you know, a very good singer would do it way better than I just did it. No, but it's very clear what you said. I think that uh, it depends on the taste of the singer, but also on the melody. 
And when I speak and I and I read, I don't even realize what I do. I don't know if I'm doing Ketu or Respiri. This is not my choice. I just read. Yes, and but so for, I, us, I, for us, we, we're trying to capture that. So we have to have a plan, right? Oh, yeah. here's another very interesting thing. So often, if you look at Donizetti or Verdi or Bellini, when their text creates a choice of doubling, they often repeat it. And sometimes they'll even change the rests to, to provoke the phrasal doubling the way, a different way the second time. I've seen this in music. So you'll see a repeated phrase. So they, they actually love the idea. I think they like the idea. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm making a straw man argument, but uh, that they like the idea of repeating the text so that you may, you may do the doubling a different way the second time. Or who knows? Maybe they did not double in you know, 1845. I think in this precise case that uh, the melody leads uh, the choice of the phrasing doubling because, in my opinion, that's just my opinion, but the double T is better than the double R. It sounds much better, but because of I, the I, melody. I would go for the double T. Jen, so there's a repetition, so you could try the R. And, you know, it's a challenge. Can you do this and be musical and will it be valid, right? It's very, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's very, it's just very, I find this very, very interesting and to hear people do it differently. And then there are some singers, for instance, um, the baritone Tito Gobbi used almost no phrasal doublings and it's the most beautiful, still most beautiful Italian, right? And then there are, there are singers like Del Monaco and uh, Tibaldi who use lots. And it's it's equally as valid. So let's go on. This um, yes, but uh, this um, phrasal doubling are really something that to me they are absolutely hard to control because if I think of them, uh, I really do them too much. So I just don't think. Absolutely. I think that I don't want to do them because I don't like it. So if it comes out, it's just something very slight. But well, if it does, I don't want to do it because I don't like it. When I hear people doubling, I don't like it. But sometimes you have to. I mean, I, when and, and then I do it all the time. If you ever listen to what I do, you will hear me doubling all the time. But, but I am a rock singer. <laughs> so I have to be tough. I have to do. I, here's, it's different. here's the thing, right? For us, it's even more dangerous because it's an affectation because we're trying to affect, yes. we're trying to affect the, what a natural speaker does without thinking, right? So think about how dangerous it is to all of a sudden sound very, very affected, right? As a result of affecting um, a, a thing that's a natural phenomenon in language, right? So it's so, it's even harder to assimilate that for a non-native speaker. So now we have al fin respiro, the next fin, line. Yeah. Al fin respiro. So you're, you're rolling the R because it touches the N. And then the, the second R is flipped. It's, a, it's uh, surrounded by vowels. Yes. And let's go on. Uh, I will say something about oh. this respiro. <clears throat> Tebaldi pronounces this final O quite often. That I noticed that all the singers I have heard, they tend to open uh, the final vowels, open E, open O. And this is something that happens actually uh, often. If you listen to some natives, very important singers, and you notice that they opened the last vowels. This is something that used to happen, especially in the past, but, and it sounds beautiful, but it's not so, so, so nice now, to, I think. It well, is better here's, to say. Here's the, here's the thing, right? Here's the thing about that. In Colorni, right? Yeah. In Castel, mm, right? Yes. They're, they're keeping this tradition of opening the vowel. 
right? Opening the beginning, the, the unstressed. However, what we talked about before was you're coming from a basis of in your native language, you close all these vowels when you speak. So the intent of those vowels was originally closed. So now you're going, hey, Joe, you understand? I've opened those vowels, but what is the intent? It's still A and O, right? So if you're a non-native speaker and you start off right away, right away with, ah, ah, how different is that? Yeah. And how vocally wrong is that? Yes. Okay, let's go on. Alfin respiro ovunque il guardo io giro. So there are, there's lots of, speaking of giro, right? It's like uh, the waves are going as you go around, right? So this is lots of vowels in this, in this one, in this line, right? Ovunque il guardo io io. Right, and, it, and, and you know, for the viewer to see how much flesh is involved in that. Difference from hi, I'm Bob. I'm an American when I speak here. <laughs> ovunque. There's also an M. Ovunque. Mm, 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 yes. So, yes. So you're going to say que, and it's at the it's at the point of the que, right? Yeah. Middle of, it's done. That end is done with the middle of the tongue. Mm. That, that you call an That N is also very useful for singing. That end is very helpful. Okay. Yeah, to get, to get, you, get, the, get yourselves into the mask. Right? Yes, yes, exactly. For the, the head resonance. Yes. Uh, okay, shall we go on? Yes. Le tue vaghe sembianze. Here so, we have the M and now, Here is where I would have a disagreement with the LE. In um, most careful singers of Italian, they will not double. L-E, le, is a weak monosyllable. So Colorni would have disagreed with you that there would be no double T after le. With, with me? Yes, weak, it's a weak monosyllable. So, because I did, I did a double phrasing? Yes, yes, oh, you did phrase it. That's okay, that's okay. All right, I'm just pointing out where, in, so if you look in Colorni's book, about five pages from the end, she lists the weak, the weak, the weak monosyllables, right? And I also have a video, I'm plugging my own video now, all about phrasal doubling. And all I'm basically doing is reading what Colorni said in her book. You know, I can't take credit for this video. None of that is my idea. It's all Colorni. And she, she came up with it. I just put in a video form so people who don't want, you know, they want to just hear it, they could, they could go on it. But that's one of the ones that's weak. La and le. They're, they're two weak uh, definite articles. Oh, let's go on. Um, so it's the word sembianze. Sembianze. So you have two nasalizations, right? The M and the N. Yes, sembianze. And it's not sembianze. It's yeah, well, sem we call those shadow vowels in English, right? That's, that's just like somebody lazily releasing the tongue. Yes. You hear this a lot. It's very funny because the, the, the stereotypical Southern Italian American accent is that with lots of shadow vowels. So they have somebody speaking English. We hear this all the time on TV and radio um, of somebody saying like, shut up, uh, you face. Uh -huh. right? Okay, that is so, so that, that's what people think of. Uh -huh. and, okay. and you know, you hear lots of singers singing that, right? Okay. Amore in me dipinge. Okay, so you had your first assimilation. I N M E becomes a nasalization of the M. So there's no in a me at this point. It's too clunky, right? You could. Some people can sing it. You can say in me, right? But when you go, the faster you go, it just becomes M. So you, yeah. you demonstrate again. In me. See? Or in me. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's beautiful either way because it's legato. The other way is just too complicated and it stops. Yeah, it slows down. But the most important thing to underline now 
because we know it, but we have to say it. Uh, this imme, sorry, imme. When I say it double M, I'm not saying imme with yes. the vibration. Yes, 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 yes. I'm saying yeah. nasalized. Is that right? Nasalized. Imme, imme. Yeah, that's imme. actually that's quite beautiful and quite precise because it's often misunderstood, right? So. They, they, somebody who can't remember very well then will go sing for a conductor and go imme and and hang on and they say who told you to do that and then they say well my coach did it, well no your coach didn't you tell you to do that it's just an exaggeration of it <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> right um all my life i heard amor double m <laughs> Double R in the Neapolitan, the Neapolitan. Oh, <laughs> wrong. Yes. wrong. Amore. Yes. Yes. Close the O, single M, single R. Yes. And close O. Amore. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. let's go on. Yes. Ale. <laughs> Il mio pen I would say il mio pensier, but it is. Il mio pensier si finge. Oh, so you would close the uh, after the semivowel. Sorry? You'd, you'd close the E after the semivowel. Semivowel. I yeah. it. Yes, when I say pensier. Right. Yeah, pensier. well, see... Here, here's the thing, right? Um, in in Zed that talks about this, the, the like the the trying to find the formulas, and he's actually he quotes Kolorni at one point, right? Kolorni had the formulas of most semi vowels. If there's an e before an e, it's most likely going to be closed. Very few exceptions, right? And here's the thing now, right? Hasn't pie modified? It's pie in Kolorni. But now I think if you look in the DOP, P, the, you know, for foot, it's PA. Yes. Right. But in old Italian, it was PX. Sometimes, because, well, when you learn a lot about diction, modern diction, old diction, and you really have a lot of confusion, then, well, I think the way I speak, so I just pronounce it the way I do. But... I also I always have to check, and I am a native speaker. I mean, but it's really difficult. This is a very difficult subject for us too, because well, we are we all stick to our own accent so much that it is very difficult. Unless you are really um, born in, in certain people born in Tuscany, they still speak uh, very well. They know these roots, even if they don't know them, they just speak right, but it's really hard. Here, here, you brought up a very important point. No matter how much you think you know, double check, double check four or five different sources. And then it's very interesting because you'll see, well, they don't, they agree, they don't agree, right? And then you come to, you come to a conclusion, but in the end, right? Uh, quello che non è naturale non è bene, right? The thing that sounds the most natural will be the thing that is the most musical. Yes. And then here again, le più liete speranze. Right. The, the word liete also closes in certain places, no? In liete. certain liete. regions, liete. right. Liete. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I remember having arguments with Italians over that, right? Before, in, in New York, when I was in New York. But... Every single um, uh, argument from authority has it open. Every, almost every dictionary, like Tingarelli, right? So, and, and very few, you hear very few modern people saying it open. Well, it depends where they are from. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I've heard it. To me, it sounds bad because I'm not used to say it. I'm really having a hard time saying it, liete. Ah. I just open it too not too much because it's not mine. I would say liete, and it's this is the way I I like it because it sounds to me, but it's not right. <laughs> the, bigger, the bigger crime you would hear would be people people see as soon as people open that e right uh, the a as soon as that a becomes open people are prone to doubling the t who are non Italian so they'll say liete immediately yeah. that's the thing you have to guard against more 
right? Yeah. Is not doubling the T. And pew, when you say pew, it's a strong monosyllable, so you have a double, a slight double L, right? Yeah. All right, let's go on. Okay. E nel desio che così mempie il petto. Okay. Um, so we have to be very careful with the word petto. Uh, never say petto and yes. never say peto because it's yes. even worse. Yes. <laughs> Two T's, open E. <laughs> right. so this is one of the most important that if you get nothing else wrong, right? right? If you get anything else, you can get only this the one thing that you don't get wrong in this area is that word. Yes. This is the thing that we have to say right. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so, um, mempie is one of the examples of having a stressed vowel that's also closed. There's also, there's a lot of disinformation about uh, that there's some sort of rule about open and closed vowels and you just have to memorize the words. You have to know. And if you don't know, you can check, but you should find a, a source to 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 check these things. So things can be stressed and open, or they could be stressed and closed. Yes, you know that Italian is filled with uh, irregular words. So you you learn a rule, and uh, all of a sudden you learn how many things that do not respect the rule. <laughs> this is just the language. <laughs> yes, right. So in the same sentence, you have uh, petto, which is open e stressed and main pie, right? And I exaggerated both for the for for a demonstration. Okay, let's okay. go. Cerco te, ti amo te, spero e sospiro. Okay. So, we have the idea of um allophones, right? Which is a word you never hear in English, right? Only only people who our, our professors in phonetics would come up with that, right? So we have to be careful in English with things that are consonants that are aggressive in English, right? So an English speaker would say cerco te. They're exactly the same. This is the allophone. They're the same basic thing, but we say them wrong. Chiamo te, right? So. Everything in Italian is goes way more towards the voiced than the unvoiced. It is not as aspirated. When we hear uh, English speakers speaking Italian, and they use the t, 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 instead of the t, the t, 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 yeah. t, 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 we, we perceive it as a c. Mm -hmm. c, c mm -hmm changes the meaning of the vowel, yes. the, of the word, yes. so be careful. Right, so that, you know, um, I, I had one time I came up with a list of, you know, the ones, the, the open and closed vowels that you need to pay attention to, because on the other side, so I had, you know, two columns of words, and if you say it this way, it's a real word, and if you say it the other way, it's a bad word that you want to avoid. That's going to embarrass you in public. Yeah. And if someone someone speaks Italian, right? So those are the things you those are the first things you want to avoid. So spero e sospiro. So double S is very ugly in the theater. There's lots of S in this, right? It's very very diff. This is probably the di most difficult line to sing. So you have to have the right distribution of vowel but still be intelligible enough. If you say this sentence like this, spero e sospiro, it sounds like a cartoon. It's it's really... Don't do it. With... Elongate the vowels, right? So we've made it to another, the end of another video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Right now, the YouTube algorithm is... Uh, only benefiting the big corporate channels, so uh, small creators such as Elena and and myself, we will appreciate it if you share. It helps us with the algorithm. Don't forget to subscribe to Elena's channel if you haven't already. It's Elena Villa, the, the Elena Villa, the channel, right? On YouTube, you may find her, and also Elena Villa 
Italia IT. Yes. Uh, thank you all for now. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you, everybody. Buon canto a tutti. Bye bye.